In this video, we are going to have a look at how you go about determining the domain and the range of a function. So we're going to have a look at a few examples. Based on the previous video that you watched, I'd like for you to pause the video and to try these on your own. Okay, number one. The domain and the range of the following functions. Now, number one is a quadratic function. We're going to learn a lot more about quadratic functions in this section. But these arrows on the end tell you that the graph continues up to infinity and it will continue to get wider and wider and wider. So remember the domain refers to the x values that the graph covers and the range refers to the y values that the graph covers. So if this graph is going to continue to get wider going to the left all the way to negative infinity and to the right, it means that it in theory will cover every single x value on the Cartesian plane. So we will say that its domain is an element of real numbers. If you wanted to write that in, as an interval notation, you would say that it goes from negative infinity to positive infinity. You don't need to give both of these. You can choose the representation that you prefer. Now, the range of the function, we can see that the range or the y values that the graph covers only start at the value of negative 3. If a is the point 4 and negative 3, it means that this value here on the x-axis is 4 and the value on the y-axis is negative 3. You can see that the graph does not exist below negative 3 and it only exists above negative 3 and it will carry on going all the way to positive infinity. So the range of the graph you can either say that y is going to be bigger than or equal to negative 3 or you can say that the range goes from negative 3 to infinity. And we include the negative 3 because the graph physically reaches negative 3 before it makes a turn and goes up again. Okay, question 2. You need to be a little bit careful because this graph or this function is very specific. There is no line that joins these points together. So the only elements of the domain are actually 1, 2, 3. 3 and 4 exactly. So there is a number of ways that you can you can reflect that. You can list them. You can say that x is an element 1, 2, 3 and 4 in a set. But a more general way of doing that is to say that x is the set where x is bigger than or equal to 1 but smaller than or equal to 4 and that x is an element of the set of integers or you could even say natural numbers because we can't say real numbers because the bits in between the points are not joined so it is only the actual physical integer values that are joined we cannot use interval notation to represent the domain or the range of this function because interval notation is only for real numbers so that is only if there is a line that is joining your points together the range of this function, if you have a look, the range are the y values. They're actually exactly the same as the x values, 1, 2, 3, and 4, except we're now referring to the range, so it's the set of y's. y will be bigger than or equal to 1, but smaller than or equal to 4, and y will be an integer.